jumping back into the action now on the Chip Shot Football Podcast, looking over some of these games here. One of the most underrated games from the weekend was this 28 to 27 comeback victory by the Arizona Cardinals over the Miami Dolphins. A game that many perhaps didn't have on their television just because you know you're thinking the Cardinals or the Dolphins maybe not so exciting but this game was really a nail biter that Arizona won in the end 28 to 27 with a last second field goal on the road mind you to go to 4 and 4 on the year while the Miami Dolphins unfortunately with all the excitement the just hype the energy around Tua's return unfortunately that got spoiled and they dropped to two and five now on the season and Arizona funny enough with this win um, and the win last week as well they've won finally back-to-back wins back-to-back games excuse me in a season for the first time since September 26th in 2021 a pretty ridiculous thing to to think about right to not win back-to-back games for almost like five years four years is it, it doesn't seem like too far, but it's pretty um, remarkable that they haven't been, been able to do that. So for them to do that now, I think that's a good sign for them going forward. And like I mentioned, this was to his return after clearing concussion protocol during last week's practices. You know, he was able to play. He was very adamant during the week also when we talked about how Um, He was very convinced that he wanted to come back. He was very convinced that, you know, he wasn't going to retire. The love for this game, very admirable, admirable by Tua to, um, you know, to kind of see what what this game means to him. So for him to come back, you know, it was great to see him out there. He had a run also that got everybody off of their feet. So that was awesome to see by Tua. But unfortunately, he would have loved the win. But um, that wasn't the case. You know, it led to Miami. Um, it led this game was Miami's highest scoring game of the entire year, but you know, like we keep saying, it was uh, spoiled there by the Arizona Cardinals. And with the Cardinals, and on that question that I brought up, you know, in the sort of teaser to this segment, um, the Cardinals, believe it or not, are the fourth seed in the playoffs right now. And obviously, with them being in the top four. They're leading the NFC West at 4-4 four and four right now. They're in first place in their division. For everybody that might not know that, that might not even believe that, because it is the Cardinals, right? The same old Cardinals, just they're okay, I guess, for a lot of the uh, a lot of people's minds, a lot of people's opinion about them. But, you know, they're, they're hanging in there. They're in first place right now, um, like I said, at 4-4. Four and four, But San Francisco, Seattle, they're also 4-4, four and four, but the Cardinals have... Uh, those legs above them and the Rams who I predicted would win this division are in three and four they're technically last but I feel like they like the Eagles like we just talked about are finding their groove at the right point of the season so I'm picking them to win the division but I don't think it should lessen what the Arizona Cardinals have been able to do up until now because they're they're four and four and that might not be exciting it might not make front page in the newspaper or anything like that but for this Cardinals team and how you know they're viewed and with Marvin Harrison coming in maybe not a lot of people knowing who Trey McBride is one of the young up-and-coming tight ends James Conner bringing them a lot of balance in their running game I'm pumping the brakes a little bit on the Cardinals you know I'm trying not to get overly hyped like this team is going to win the Super Bowl next year I'm not saying that but I'm just saying that the Cardinals for what they have been in recent seasons, you know, they haven't won back-to-back games since 2021. They're not going to be that bad. You know, they're going to be good sooner rather than later, in my opinion, because I think Kyler isn't given the the credit that he deserves for being, for being a very good thrower of the football with that baseball background. Um, I think that helps a lot, and I think he's been playing very well. He was a big contributor to this win, as, um, as I will mention, but... You know, they have a running game with James Conner. He's been one of the more underrated guys over the last few years. Trey McBride, um, you see the difference that these tight ends make nowadays with Brock Bowers just in his first year. Obviously, the Kelseys, the uh, the Kittles of the world. Kittle is having a phenomenal season. And uh, Mark Andrews in Baltimore, he's starting to pick it up also. To kind of have a guy like that in Trey McBride, I think doesn't get spoken about enough and finally they got their guy right Marvin Harrison Jr. the number one guy 
their number one target, the number one receiver, right? They just need to fill in the, the other gaps because they have everything else, in my opinion, and obviously the defense, right? I think they need a solid piece there to add on to, you know, Buda Baker and guys like that. So um, they're not just like the same old Cardinals. They're just going to be stuck in neutral in just the same old all right team. They're going to be good. They're going to be good sooner rather than later. I like what Jonathan Gannon's doing. And um, I think it just showed in this game, right? Kind of proving to, to people that they're not just going to roll over because they definitely could have in this game, but they kept fighting. They kept, you know, trying to come back in this game and they were successful in doing so. And the Cardinals in this game, you know, talking about Kyler Murray, he had 307 yards, two touchdowns, and he added 19 rushing yards, a QB rating of 116, very good for uh, for any quarterback, and passing-wise, you know, for those 300 yards, Trey McBride had nine receptions on National Tight End Day for 124 yards, Marvin Harrison, six receptions, 111 yards, and a touchdown, and also Michael Wilson added another touchdown as well, and James Conner, maybe not the most gaudy numbers but he had 20 carries 53 yards and a touchdown solid solid games offensively for them and they made big stops when they needed to and also on the other side you know the Dolphins didn't play a bad game you know this was their highest scoring game of the entire year and they had 234 yards a touchdown Devon A chain 97 yards 10 carries uh, Raheem Mostert was the one that found the end zone rushing with two of them, but Devon Achain got in the end zone with a pass. And Tyreek Hill finally back on the on the map with six receptions for 72 yards. Not a bad game, but just the Cardinals, I feel like, stepped up to this game and um, you know just executed better down the line. And also, um, with this game and how it all sort of broke down here, just um, quickly, you know, the Dolphins... Had it going to start this game off. They were off to a 10 to nothing lead. And Arizona made it close at one point, 10 to 7, after that touchdown to Michael Wilson. But Miami added a field goal. Um and they added a field goal and it also added um that field goal to make it 13 to 7 into halftime. Then Miami not only did they take the lead into halftime by basically almost a touchdown. Um, they also extended the lead even more and made it 20 to 10 after the the Cardinals got another field goal and you know it was starting to it felt like pull away from the Cardinals at that point but Arizona got it going after a um, a it's just a bad play by the Dolphins you know it was a high snap that went over to his head he tried to pushed it out of bounds, and he almost completely whiffed and failed on it. But luckily for him, it did roll out of the back of the end zone, and the Cardinals got that spark, right? They got the safety. They got the ball back after they punted it to them. And, um, you know, the the Cardinals took that punt, and they went down and scored off of that but failed on the two-point conversion. So um, at that point, you know, the the Arizona Cardinals were trailing 20-18. to 18. So... You know, it is right there for, for a game that, you know, your feeling is starting to pull away from you. Then, boom, you get a missed, mishandled snap, safety. You score off of that, and then you're right back in it in a new ball game. So, still, though, Miami, I'm sure we're feeling like, you know, we're, we're still in control of this game. We just had a bad play, and they took advantage of it. Let's go out there and respond, and that's exactly what they did. They went down and scored a touchdown. Raheem Mostert got his second of the day with 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. They're down, or now they're up by uh, they're up by nine points at this point, the Miami Dolphins, with, like I said, 12 minutes left. So basically a good amount of the quarter left, but you know, nine points uh, for Miami to be at home and give that up in the fourth quarter was looking a little bit tough. But, of course, Arizona scored with eight minutes left still in the fourth quarter. So they scored very quickly, only taking up about four minutes. And now the score is 27 to 25. And even then, you're thinking Miami must have something here to respond with. But Arizona's defense, for the one time in this game that they needed them to, they forced the Dolphins to punt away the ball. And from that point on, it's not like there was like a minute left. Arizona, for what turned out to be the last drive of the game, put together a 13-play, 73-yard drive that killed the last five minutes of this game. So, 
for an offense for a game where the Cardinals were battling back, battling back, battling back. Um, they had their best drive. They had their best two series of the game where their defense came up with a big stop, got the ball back quickly, and their offense just flawless drive to kill off the last five minutes, and they ended up scoring that last second field goal, right, to take the three points and win by one point, 28 to 27. So with that now being the case, you know, as much as it was for Arizona, a massive win for them, I think this was a pretty big loss for the Dolphins as well. Um, I don't, I didn't really see too much from this team um, going forward, and I mentioned that if they lost this game, they were one of my picks to uh, to kind of you know wrap up the season or at least really consider it because they're sitting at two and five right now, and um, you know you might feel from after seeing this game that uh, that this offense you you believe in this offense again with Tua coming back, Tyreek looked great, Jalen Waddle obviously and Devon A. Chain, but you're still two and five in an AFC conference that's very tight that is going to be very tight over the last couple of weeks and. You look at this Dolphins schedule, you know, you look at the Bills game, that's their next game up, they're probably going to lose. Then they play the Rams, who are playing just as good as anybody, I believe. They're probably going to lose that game too, so they're going to be 2-7 and seven at that point. And for, for you to be in 2-7, and seven, you have the last 7-8 to eight games left, you'd have to win a good amount of those games and be maybe 9 um, nine and eight or ten and seven or something like that, and I just don't see that happening. Um, for this Dolphins team, while they have shown some good signs, it's it's hard for me to believe that they're just gonna turn it on quickly and uh, roll out a great stretch of games. I don't really see it. Um, so this game, while it was exciting for Arizona, I've said that they've uh they're showing good signs here to to kind of emphasize the fact that they're gonna be pretty good in the next couple couple years or maybe one year, but. This loss for, for the Dolphins definitely hurts, um, and I feel like it's not going to be enough. I think it's going to be too little too late for them now going forward, and you know, looking at it, even still with the playoffs and everything like that here, is, it's the last thing I'll mention. Maybe you're thinking seventh seed, um, but you look at the Chargers, they have that spot right now, and I don't see them you know, kind of falling off the face, the face of the earth. Um, and then you look at the number eight spot, um, maybe to give you some hope, that's where the, the Colts sit. And I don't think um, they're just going to fall off either. They just announced today that Joe Flacco is going to be back in there as their starter. So I don't think that's just going to make them lose the next five games. So it's hard for the Dolphins to kind of squeeze in there now. They're going to need a lot of help, and I don't see it coming this year. So, you know, they might have to ponder over their long-term view on this season and going forward. But Great win by the Cardinals. They're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with. And maybe you're, if they make the playoffs, that's going to be a huge win for the Cardinals, right? They're not going to win the division. I've already said that's going to be the Rams. But, um, you know, the Cardinals, if they fight for a playoff spot and somehow get one, that enough, that alone is going to be a, a massive win for this team and give them great confidence going forward with this project for Jonathan Gannon. So great win for the Cardinals. But now, speaking about great wins... Um, we're going to move on and talk about the Houston Texans, a divisional game against the Indianapolis Colts, who we just mentioned. The Texans sweep the Colts. They go to 6-2, and two, but with a lot of major losses for the Colts and also some things to talk about here for the Indianapolis Colts as well. So we'll be right back after a short break with the Colts and Texans game. 